let me ask you two, do you eat breakfast or not? And do you have friends that skip breakfast? And I'm just going to preface this and say, I'm a wreck if I don't. I have very rational friends that are very healthy that have no problem skipping breakfast. And I can't look them in the eye and say, you lie, you're a wreck, you're a mess, or you snuck something and you really had it. And to me, this is like, wow, we, there really is some interesting biological variability here. Some people are fine skipping breakfast and doing this in a narrower window. And I'm not sure that's a choice. I think they're like metabolically, biologically suited to do that. Are you breakfast eaters or skippers? I'm an eater and I just literally wait till I'm hungry. And sometimes that's 7.30 and sometimes it's 9.30. Like it's just- okay. Not noon hits. though. Okay. Never. No, I'm always, there's, I'm not ever not hungry. I mean, but by 10 I've eaten for sure. I'm hungry. Yeah. But I bet you have friends who you respect yeah. and love that yeah. skip breakfast. Yeah. They're just not into it. Yeah. You don't no. hate them just because they, they don't You know, they often drink a lot breakfast. of coffee and I don't drink coffee at all. And I think they do something else. Or I try and keep 12 hours from the last time I ate, which is usually right before bed at nine o'clock. So I eat at nine. Like today I, I ate at nine, but if I go to the gym and I might not be home till 10, 30 or 11, then I will eat at 11 sometimes. So it really depends on my life, but I don't, I, I wouldn't be able to go to noon with, if I was at home in front of my computer, because I don't. But I mean, part of this is just the variability where we don't have one answer for everyone. Uh, there's some, some rules. We should get rid of the crappy carbs. We should try to eat healthy, low carb or low fat. Protein, interestingly, I don't know if you ever want to get into protein. I have some fun data on protein that it just, as much as we obsess over it, it doesn't change much. Are you interested in that at all? Oh, yeah. yeah. We always, everyone asks vegans about their protein. So, yeah. So, I, oddly enough, so in our uh, low fat, low carb diet, initially, uh, the protein varied a little from baseline. And they really change the carbs and fats. If you go out to 12 months, they maintain quite a bit of the fat and carb change, but their protein is both right at about 20%. In the keto med study, ketogenic versus Mediterranean diet, if you go out to the farthest time point, the protein is almost identical. There's a really famous weight loss study called Pounds Lost. It is the biggest, longest weight loss study ever done. It was a collaboration between Pennington and Louisiana, actually not in Louisiana, in Baton Rouge, and Harvard School of Public Health. And they both recruited 400 people. And they had a very clever idea to like answer all the questions at one time elegantly. There were two levels of protein, 15 and 25%. There were two levels of fat, 20 and 40%. And when you put those together, it meant carbs were either 65, 55 50, 65, 55, 45, or 35. So in one study, they were going to answer low high carb, low high fat, low high protein, all in one study. Two years out, the, the differences in carb and fat were still there, but they were quite a bit more modest than they had hoped. They were about a third of the difference. The group assigned a 15% 50, protein was eating 21 and the group assigned to 25 was eating 20 or something. I mean, it was, it, they couldn't answer the question. The protein was identical at the end. I started putting this together for a conference talk that I had to get. I said, I'm not here to tell you what's going on. I'm here to ask you what's going on. Let me show you how many studies I have where people wildly change their carbon fat and their protein is always 20, 20, 20, 20. 20. 2020, 2020, where are these people who are saying, yeah, I'm at 30, I'm the 35% protein. Real people eating real food. I don't know if you've heard of this protein leverage hypothesis from a guy in Australia. You sort of eat till you get enough protein and then you stop eating. So there's a very interesting hypothesis about choosing the foods that give you a reasonable amount of protein. And so, because we, we weren't talking about that, a lot of our talk today was about carbs and fats, healthy carbs and healthy fats. And that would be true with protein too, because if you get healthier proteins, that tends to be plants that have fiber in it, as opposed to meats 
that have the saturated fat in it. In fact, David Katz and I and some others wrote a recent paper about modernizing the definition of protein quality. And the traditional traditional metric, either PDCAAs, that's the protein digestibility amino acid chemical score. There's two or three others with crazy acronyms. The basis of it is usually what's the chemical amino acid score, what's the proportion of amino acids, and how digestible is it? And we proposed, well, that's not quite enough because those sources of protein, meats versus plants, have an impact on the environment. And so the plant ones have less of an impact. And the meat sources come with saturated fat and no fiber, and the plant ones come with low saturated fat and high fiber. And so what if you made a four metric system for this protein quality? All of a sudden, some of the animal protein quality would go down and the legume and bean protein quality would go up and it would be even or more more even. And so this idea that, I mean, there's just not people out there that are protein deficient in the U.S. It's not an issue. So why why are we leaving the environment and the other nutrients that come in protein-rich foods out of an equation of an overall quality diet that's good for humans and good for the planet? So very pleased of this uh, rethinking or modernizing the definition of protein quality from what we published a couple of years ago. When Just one question on the protein. When you said that the study in Australia found that when people eat enough protein, then they stop. They stop eating protein or they feel satiated because a lot and don't eat anything else because a lot of people feel Yeah, like- so it could be a food issue. So that's the one. And it's, it's actually not a study. It's more of an anthropological view of different animals and species. And they were sort of this, these investigators sort of look anthropologically, how much protein do different species get and how much do humans get? And so if you look for this uh, protein leverage hypothesis, it's pretty interesting. And it is tied, Alexander, to this idea that maybe part of the strategy would be choose your foods and then when you get enough protein, you'll be satiated and you'll stop eating. I haven't found that exactly. So let me, even though I just brought that up, let me bring up a very clever Barbara Rules study from Penn State where she made a casserole which always looked the same. So from the outside, you couldn't tell what was in the casserole. And she made a version that six versions. It had 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35% protein. She asked them to eat till they were full. They all ate the same number of calories. So that actually goes against what I said for satiety. So I got one perspective looking at species across centuries, and here's an idea. And I have another very clever nutrition scientist who's sort of masking the protein content of meals and asking people to eat until they're full, and it had no impact. Mm, so, so it this was is, calories. It was calories that they that the body was measuring instead of protein. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So I, I'm having a hard time putting those two together, but I'm also... I'm fascinated with how constant protein is for most people. It's it's usually more like 18, but it, it varies. Maybe it's 16, 17, 18, 19. It's super, I have to do diet assessments in all my studies. And so I started looking across all of them. I, I just, it's staggering how consistent it is around that range, despite asking them to eat widely varying amounts of fats and carbs. So I hope somebody's listening and says, ah, oh, I noticed the same thing. I'm going to write that guy an email because I think it's this because I can't explain it. You'll, uh, you're going to, we're going to really enjoy those, those emails. I know. 